So we are bringing you guys outdoors on location and it is powered by Impact Photo Store. It is a photo and video equipment company located right here in Ghana. And they are the ones providing us with all the equipment, the juicy equipment that we'll be using to film our scene today. Okay, so we have a couple of things going on today. I'm going to be doing video. We'll take a, a short cinematic scene. But what I want to talk about is going to be the lighting that we have going on. We're shooting outdoors, broad daylight but we want to control this outside light with the brand new Nanlux Evoque 2400B. This is the first light in Africa. It's a really, really powerful light. And the good thing about it is that you can plug it straight into your walls. We have a bit of a massive situation going on. This is the ballast that comes with the lights. It's actually quite surprising how they were able to, you know, make it so compact and portable, even looking at the output that this light is producing. This light is a beast, but the ballast that it comes with is really portable. It's not too heavy, you know, and then it has a strap that you can lock it onto your stands. Um, this is the head itself. And this unit, because of how powerful the light is, if you don't have any modifier on it, when you turn it on, it stays at zero and it will prompt you to put on a modifier before the light will actually come on. So this is going to serve as our main light. We're gonna shoot it through the screen to create a very soft, beautiful light on our subject. And we have another non light, which is going to be our second light. And that is the non light FC500B. This is one of their more affordable light versions. And what we're going to be using this for is just an edge light to add a bit of separation to our subject. So this is pretty much the simple setup that we have going on in terms of lighting. We have a bit of a team situation going on. We want people to be able to see what we are filming. And so we have a director on set, Corey, and we want him to see the footage that is coming from my camera. I wouldn't want him to be over my shoulder looking at what is going on over here. So I want to be free to work freely. And I also want them to see exactly how the footage is looking if they need to correct me, if they want me to shoot from certain angles, it will be easier for him to do that. We do have the solid comb, but I hear that we are out of battery juice on that one. So we will reserve that for another video. This is a 4K transmitter, so we will have high resolution and it can be a transmitter or a receiver. So what we are doing is today I'm using it as a transmitter and I'm sending the signal to the app on the iPad so it has a bigger screen, more real estate to see what's going on, what we are filming. So that is pretty much everything that is happening on here. For power, I'm using the small rig VB99 and this is powering the camera and the monitor and so I'm not going to be too worried about any of them running out of power. And uh, that's pretty much everything going on. I'm shooting on the R5, not the R5C. And on the front, I have a variable ND filter from KNF so we can stop this whole outdoor situation down and then use our lights to shape uh, the scene the way we really want it to go. And our model for today is Napari Aisha. Um, she's just going to be sitting pretty and maybe just doing a few movements around and uh, I think that's pretty much everything going on. I will show you how the scene looks without all of these lights going on and then we'll shape it with these uh, lights that we have and see. Uh, you can let me know in the comments which one you think is a better view. I'm going to press record on the camera and right now what you're seeing is the raw footage from the camera. I'm shooting in C-Log3 so my ISO is starting at 800. You can see that it is very, very bright because I'm keeping my shutter speed at 1 over 1 25th. I'm shooting at 2.8 because I want to blur the background and I'm using the native ISO, which is 800. And you can see that this is very overexposed. If I want to get a decent exposure on here, what I will have to do is probably just increase my aperture. So from 2.8, I'm going down. This looks like a decent exposure, but you can see that it's actually toned down and I'm at f5.6. We've also lost the depth of field and so it's not really as, you know, popping as I would want. So this is where you can still take your aperture down to 2.8 and now bring in your lights to the exposure that you want, right? So let's just go back to 2.8. Now again, it's looking really, really bright. So I'm going to start by dialing in my variable ND till I'm able to darken the background to the point that I like. So something like this I feel looks good. I really like it and I'm going to be doing handheld so I can ask, actually just like move from her face maybe down a little bit or go back up. I can have that flexibility to do that. If I also want to do a really wide one like I was saying, I can just go all the way to 24 and this is the frame that we have. 
So now that I've picked the frame that I want to start with, we've underexposed the image. We haven't added our lights yet. I want to start with the edge light. So let's turn that on. And that is the FC 500. Yeah, now you can see what it's doing. It just added a bit of separation in the back. What I will do next is add our main light. So that's what we're going to turn on and figure out the position that is going to come from. But already you can see that we do have some definition in terms of the light source. So what we'll do is just add to that and make it wrap around her face even better. The beautiful thing about the light is also the fact that you can actually control it with an app. And so just by moving this, I can turn the light on or off. And because we are plugged into the wall output from this building, I just set it to constant output because I don't want to use the maximum 20 amps that it would pull just in case we break a circuit. But if you want to push more out of the light, you can just set it to max output and that just increases the power. But I'm just going to set it to constant and then we'll see if we can use that. Now, one great thing about this light is, even though it is powerful and powerful enough to be compared to the HMIs in terms of the outputs and stuff, I know that with the HMIs, if you want to get power into them, the whole process is cumbersome. And if you turn it on, you have to wait a little bit for the bulb to warm up to the correct temperature and all of that. But this is actually really easy. All we did was make sure we connected from the ballast to the light head itself. And then from there, we went straight into the wall. As you can see, we're in the backyard of a house and this light is working. We didn't need any electrical work. Now. Nothing. You also have two output forms. You have the max output and the constant output. At the max output, you get a lot of draw from the light, a lot of output, and then it's drawing about 20 amps. But because we want to be safe, you know, there are other things on in this um, apartment building, in this house, so we don't want to trip any circuits. So we just set it to the constant output and we're still able to get enough light to light up the scene. Guys, I'm going to turn on the 2400 b and let's see what that does. If we like the position, then we'll keep it or just make small adjustments till we get the lighting the way we want. Okay, so let's increase it. What's the output now? Oh, let's go up. Let's go all the way. More, 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 more. 83. Okay, that's fine. I'll just adjust my ND a little bit to bring the exposure up. I think where we are is actually pretty decent for what we're doing. Now to add a bit more depth, I will want to add the black side of my reflector, you know, just to absorb some of the light and then create more depth in the scenes. So now that we've been able to get the lighting to look the way we wanted it to, I feel like now it's just up to me and Aisha to just keep working and see if we can create some scenes from this beautiful spot. Thank you. 